Hey metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions and meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email agelessarttattooandpiercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, Metalheads, after going to a Rager, what's your ultimate go-to? Mine is totally pizza. So when Overload is playing or I'm promoting the Metal Forge Live showcases or the big goddamn metal show, I go to Pizza Donisi. Pizza Donisi is gourmet artisan pizza from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. It features things like the pizza of the month, the sandwiches, and also vegetarian and vegan options, which is so totally fucking cool for all, all of it's It's awesome pizza. You definitely want to go. Hey, and also, from time to time, they do cannolis. Oh, so fucking good. You know what they said, man. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, just like that in Godfather. They're located right next to the Mag Bar at 1396 South 2nd Street. So either stop in or call in at 502-213-0488. They're open till midnight. The Witching Hour. Hey, Metalheads, you all hear me talk about Magbar all the time. It is the home to the Metal Forge Live showcases and is an integral stop in the ultimate underground metal tour schedule. They obviously feature live music, but the Magbar also has daily specials like Pint and Slice Night on Tuesdays with Pizza Donisi, but they also do Bring Your Own Vinyl on Thursdays with DJ Kent Jackson and Finer Things Sundays located right next to Pizza Donisi at 1398 South 2nd Street open 3pm to 4am 7 days a week get your asses out to the mag bar rock out For 45 years in keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They are open from 10 to 10, seven days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com. Roll out. The year was 1979, and all the world was caught up in disco and Star Wars. But in Louisville, something was happening. A young entrepreneur named Ben had a vision to be the best record store in all of the city. Fast forward to 2023, and Better Days Records is still going strong. Still, after all these years, owned by the same guy. We have had some trips and falls along the way, but so does life, and Better Days is here to stay. With two awesome locations at 921 Barrett Avenue and at 2600 West Broadway, better days are surely in your future. (laughs) 
In a broken wasteland I come to my fire And place your blood and steel Upon my fire What is going on, Metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of The Metal Forge. How are you all? Dudes. You know, I'm glad we are not traveling across a mountain pass in the 1880s right now. Because our guest this week is The Donner Party. And fucking right, man. Like, I've known of these guys for a while now. And I've always loved the name because I've always... How I learned about the Donner Party originally was watching the movie Wagons East back in the day with John Candy. Uh, rest in power, uh, John Candy Barf. You know, oh, he's such a such a such a treasure. You know, we lost way too young and in all of that stuff. Because I would love to have seen, you know, an older like a sixty year or so seventy year old John Candy what kind of movies he would have been making into the 2000s and stuff. Because, I mean, you know, with like Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd and, and the things that they were doing, and they were just always so, you know, well into into the same circle. And hell yeah. So the Donner Party is here today, courtesy of Soul Grinder Records. Now, uh, also Soul Grinder Zine fucking right, yes. Soul Grinder Zine, uh, about to come out with, whoa, hey, somebody's texting me, you get the, uh, the TIE Fighter flyby tonight, today, whatever, I don't care, you know this is all pre-recorded, right? Am I breaking the, the fourth wall here? Is it a fourth wall? I'm not really looking at you. Anyway, I digress, so, um, the Donner Party, courtesy of Soul Grinder Records. Now, uh, they just put out their new album, Cutting Class, a couple of weeks ago. They did a pretty awesome fucking, uh, you know, show up in uh, Allentown, PA, where uh, Soul Grinder Zine is based out of. Fucking, I love the sets of their shows, because the background of their set is the whorehouse from Beetlejuice. And it's great to see bands playing in front of that. And it's just, it's, I love it. You know, I love that film. It's, 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 it speaks to me on a, on a molecular level, I guess. So, fucking awesome stuff, man. Like with the Metal Forge and the Flamekeeper Podcast Network. You may have heard some new ads on the shows. You know, Electric Ladyland, Better Days Records. Maxwell's House of Music, Pizza Donisi, and the Mag Bar, along with uh, tried and true longtime sponsors of the show, uh, Ageless Art Tattoo and Piercing in Clarksville, Indiana, and New Albany, Indiana. Also, you know, all of the friends, the, the, uh, uh, the I, I most, I recently did a podcast, so the Partners and Pals podcast, and you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. Uh, so the partners and pals of the Metal Forge, you know, which is Shade Beast, Soul Grinder Zine, Mercenary Press, Unchained Tapes, The Wrestling Steve Show, The Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast, you know, all of those people have been so fucking rad to the Metal Forge over the last four years, and it's been great. And I appreciate them. So we've got big things coming up this year. you got all these new sponsors coming on. And we've got all these awesome fucking bands coming on and everything. We're putting on a show in October called the Big Goddamn Metal Show. And it's two nights, two venues, 14 or so bands. And it's the uh, $25 price point for the weekend. 
or you know that gets you into both venues or you could do I believe it's fifteen dollars a day uh, pre-sale and I think that goes up to 20 on the day of show I think that's what we're doing uh, we're not sure yet so obviously you know night one is Friday the 13th of October yeah at 21st in Germantown in Louisville, Kentucky, we've got Eulogy and Blood closing that night. The Hell You Say, Storm Toker, and Rifle. We haven't announced the uh, the other few bands that are on that night. So let's see, who do we have on the big goddamn metal show night two? Headlining is Snafu. Fuck yes, man. Did you all see that shit last week with those guys? I am so fucking proud of those dudes for fucking real. They're opening for the fucking Pantera reunion for three shows on the tour. That's a that's a pretty rad deal what they're doing with that. They're they're throwing in a lot of, you know, child bites playing like five or six shows, you know, and then other people are playing a few shows. So that's fucking cool. So then we've got Overload, you know, my band, Overload, uh, direct f- support for Snafu. We've uh, we've opened for them before, and it was such a fun time. It was at the Green Lantern in Lexington, Kentucky on their tour, and uh, they were on their tour, we were on ours, and we crossed paths, and it was so rad, you know, fucking, I love those guys, and I'm, I'm excited for that. Then we have uh, heavy hitters from Louisville, Kentucky, Baptize, playing on Saturday in uh, before Overload, and they bring the fucking heat. Like, for real. You need to be there for this because they legit bring the fucking heat. I'm excited for it. And the last band that has been announced for that day, currently, is Lexington's Kerr. You know, Kerr have been around this. I think the first time I ever played with them, we opened for DRI together. And they blew me the fuck away then, and we've been friends ever since. You know, shout out to the to the dudes in that band. They they fucking they kick ass completely. Super rad fucking guys. And then you know we are also doing some other things this year. We're sponsoring some stuff. We're uh, doing the uh, uh, it's like I don't know if it's a Portland Fest or if it, if it's in conjunction with Portland Fest. It, it, it used to be Portland Fest or something like that. It's it's called um, I can't remember what the, what it's fucking called. Uh, the PRF BBQ Louisville 2023. The Metal Forge is going to be running a table on uh, Labor Day weekend there, so you will be able to uh, come in and get some awesome stuff. Uh, I still plan on releasing the compilation disc this year. You know the Metal Forge. Uh, compilations and shit like that but you know I've been yammering along for a fucking minute now somebody's back this week it's Jason Gardner in the heavy metal wasteland what's up everyone coming in live this week due to some technical difficulties Uh, but hopefully once I get through this uh, technical upgrades so we uh, I patiently wait for my stuff to be fixed and get back to normal but i'm happy to be on live today talking about a couple new releases i'm I'm really digging hell yeah yeah so i want to make sure everyone knows about the new uh witch hazel album which is a witch hazel 4 called sacrament it is uh it's new wave of british heavy metal but it's very uh christian uh oriented but not like the modern Christianity. It is like think of um, think of a band playing for like 16th century Templars. It's that kind of Christian metal. It's pretty cool. They they dress up in a Templar or not Templar. Um, what's call it? Um, tunics and wear the big uh, like crosses, like the uh, the monks and stuff at that time wore, like the big huge crosses, and uh, just play uh, metal. Uh, it's cool. It's um, it's very uh, melodic. Uh, the riffs are cool. The production's always good. Uh, but like I said, the subject matter, you know, if you don't like, um, if you don't like hard on your sleeve uh, kind of stuff, then maybe it's not for you. But um, I'm just a sucker for good melodies. So I'll just take, um, I'll just take it wherever I can get it. Um, the subject matter really doesn't bother me too much. Cause like, you know, I listen to satanic stuff too. And I just laugh it all, laugh it off as goofy usually. And, and just enjoy the music for what it is. Yeah. 
How about you, Mark? Have you heard any of this album? Uh, I have not yet. Uh, I want to listen to it. Uh, I know where there's a download code. Uh, <laughs> if it's still available by the by the time we uh, we put this show out, so right. uh, you know I've I've liked everything that I've heard of Witch Hazels before. So yeah, yeah and and the whole like you know Middle Ages type deal, the the gimmick with them, I love because they're they're not. There's no other band doing that. Kind of re- kind of reminds me of like my childhood, like uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. That's a good, uh, yeah, that's a good um, time period to put them in. Yep, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like I said, if you like New Wave British Heavy Metal, you know, it's it's good. There's no uh, there's no cussing, obviously. Um, but and it's really not, not like Striper really not either. New Wave anyway, really, that I've ever heard. So. Right. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's not like Striper either, you know, like. Yeah, no, 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 it's not. It's not Striper, even though uh, the "Hell of the Devil" is a good album. I will say. Um, yeah, they've got they've got their stuff. Yeah, and they've got the whole like red and yet or the black and yellow. yellow. And black. Yeah, yeah, that that thing down, and you know, it's like seventy two seasons. I love that color scheme. Yeah. Uh, so hey, I did. Can we can we go through a whole podcast without mentioning Metallica or seventy two seasons? <laughs> yeah, that's hard. <laughs> It is hard because there. I mean, yeah, I think it's everybody's measuring stick, even though it's not. It, even if they d- wanted, uh, you know, it's like I think they're the measuring stick band for everybody. Either what would they do, or what the fuck can we do to get away from that? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, well, my measuring stick band right this year so far is still the uh, Children of the Reptile, uh, Heavy as the Head. So that's still yes. my measuring. St- but uh, I will say, so getting back to Witch Hazel, if you like any of their other stuff, um, it's 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 not as good as three. Three is probably their best so far. Mm-hmm. It's better than two, definitely better than one. I would put it like out of the four they've released, not counting the uh, EP, uh, probably second only to uh, three. Two and three, I think, were really good. Yeah, two is good. Yeah, and but it's not as good as three. Yeah, th- yeah, that yeah, I I get that. Um. Yeah. Now, like the the artwork for the Witch Hazel album, um, uh, is, is great. You know that red and gold like mm-hmm. crest work that is what it looks like to me. Yep. I I, just, I love that shit. That simple. It's almost like a stained glass look. To yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's super detailed, but it's kind of like simplistic, like in the like with exactly. the whole Norse. Like the Celtic knot work stuff looks super mm-hmm. detailed but super simplistic at the same time. Yeah, at least to me it does, anyways. Yeah, and uh, for those interested in, in vinyl, there's a bunch of different variants. Uh, the super limited edition one was sold out, but I got one called the Brecken Brecken Green, I believe it is. And if you want to see what it looks like, you can go on my last unsleeved. And um, sorry. You go on my last unsleeved, and there's actually, if you're the first to do it, there's a download code on there I put on, ready to redeem. If you redeem it, uh, please write in the comments, I am redeemed. Because that is actually the best song on Witch Hazel 3. So Ah. it was kind of tie in. It's a little meta. It's pretty cool. Wow. So the other other release I got is another uh, bunch of uh, UK uh, hooligans. These guys are called Margarita Witch Cult. And they're... Their new uh, debut album is just self-titled. Um, they're like, okay, they're like Black Sabbath. Take to the, let's take to the uh, common denominator. Uh, <laughs> put some Orange Goblin in there, but put like the tone of Motorhead's bass. I love them already. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's uh, Margarita Witch Cult. Uh, the album's like thirty minutes. It's really short, right to the point. Doesn't overstay its welcome. Unlike another release this year that has number seven and two in it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that one's on you. Yeah, I know, but I didn't say the name. Um, but yeah, so these guys are these guys seem pretty cool, and we've been in contact with them to be on the uh, Metal Forge. So hopefully uh, we'll be hearing more of these guys later on. But yeah, um, this is a really good album. It's it's in my um, album of the year contenders right now it's 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 uh it's in there so i, I dig it i 
I don't know, to it, uh, I've listened to it about 10 times. Nice. Because it's so short. You know, it's like 30 minutes. So. Y- yeah. It's like the Night Demon album. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's, it, it hits you in the face, gets the fuck out of the room, and you're ready to move on to something else. Yep. So. And that's my thing. I, that's where I'm at with the Night Demon Outsider album. It's it's mm-hmm. high up on my list for album of the year also. So it's uh, yeah, heavy as you know what? Uh, just a uh, side note. I have finally received my Night Demon box set that I must have been the last one to receive, even though I ordered it in January. So pretty excited. The uh, album has been be out doing, for three months. Yeah, I'll be doing the unsleeves on that one with all my trials and tribulations. And I haven't even opened it yet. I'm actually going to open everything on the unsleeved episode. So as we uh, as we record and start to wrap up, my computer miraculously fixed itself huh? while I was sitting here. So I can uh, record this unsleeved pretty soon and be on the lookout for that and uh, more shenanigans from all Flame Keeper podcasts. Hell yeah, coming, dude. Coming to a cell phone speaker near you. <laughs> for sure man dude yeah. Jason thank you so much for being part of the of the whole monologue this week with like you know everything that's been going on so the technical difficulties that we're talking about is uh, Maxwell's House of Music uh, sponsoring the Metal Forge for some studio equipment and so I sent it to Jason he, he uh, couldn't get it to work he tried to he tried to update his interface and it completely went and took his bat shit uh, took went and bat shit on his computer. So yeah, basically it, it deleted my my external speakers on um, playback. So when I was trying to edit stuff, I couldn't hear. It wouldn't work through headphones. If there's an internal speaker in this computer for some reason, and the only thing it would come through the internal speaker. Um, that was it. Uh, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't go through my external. It wouldn't come through headphones. Nothing like that. Um, so it I pretty much uh, set my uh, PC out of commission until this very moment where now it's back up and I'm getting ready to try it out after I get done with you, Mark. Yeah, so. see, like, fuck that shit. Dude, it's a, it's, a, it's a microphone. It's like, that shit shouldn't happen. It should just be plug and play. I know, it's like ridiculous. Like, why the fuck does this happen to me? You know? <sighs> I don't get it, dude. It happens to me, too, though. It it, it really does. So, I mean, I don't know. Also, quick note, um, going back to my last Unsleeved, if you haven't watched it, um, I am on PlayStation Network, and I do play Diablo 4, and I need some damn friends, because this shit's hard. So, if you're on PlayStation Network, I am Even Blade 2017. (laughs) That's 2017. Uh, Add me, and let's go kill some shit in the name of the Flame Keeper. Fuck yeah. Yes. Uh, see, dude, I've only got a Switch. I, I'm a kid, man. So. Yeah, you need to grow up a little bit, but that's fine. I mean. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I need to grow up a little bit. Dude, honestly, where it hit me, like, where I quit playing, where I quit gaming was on Mario 64. Dude, that's like a long time ago. I know. That's where yeah. I quit gaming because, for one, it was like really hard to get to grasp the fucking controls of that, that game. That console sucked, man. Like there was some okay games like Goldeneye and stuff. But that that controller was like yeah, Goldeneye cool. was great. I loved Goldeneye. That controller um, is horrible. Uh, but like the the controller sucked, and like I kept drowning Mario. And, like, that is such, a like, an irrational fear for me. Like, it makes me feel like I'm drowning. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I quit gaming and why I only play Super Nintendo and regular NES games on the Switch. Dude, I think everyone has a slight fear of swimming after those Mario water levels, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, those things, uh, those levels were always my by nightmare because they're hard yeah so somehow they really got the uh the physics of uh buoyancy in those old games and you really had to like um really had to like think about how far you're going to move based on how fast you're going you yeah. hit one of those stupid fish you know or, or the octopus in, yeah, or the in octopus. like mario and, like, one dude, like back then that was pretty advanced stuff you know or like sliding on ice Oh uh, yeah, in those eight sixty-four bit games, that's really cool stuff. Um, well, I, I like the feature. Now. 
Well, see, I like the ice feature in uh, in uh, Mario 2. When you're in World 4 in the ice world, you actually slide on the ice in that, which is yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm talking about Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was cool how they even got that to work. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, All right, this is going way, way off the rails here. No, man, it's good. It's good, it, sports, it's but, good uh, to have you on here, when, and we can do this. So we're going to go back to 2013, Donner Party, from the Chain Reaction album. We're going to play Green Abyss. Man has brought the destruction of his environment close to the point of no return. Of course, there was a great deal of rhetoric about saving the Earth, but in reality, very little was done. Earth is Destroying the Earth's atmosphere Ozone depletion grows worse every year Ice hills are building a greenhouse disease Landfills of garbage replacing the trees Time is up, the time is now Ten million people wonder how We've abused every resource in our grasp A time I'm ready to explode Population overload A biosphere on the verge of collapse That's green face to black Toxic pollution is all we inhale Convergence of crises on a global scale Temperatures rising, the seas start to boil Deforestation eroding the soil Time is up, the time is now Ten million people wondered how We've abused every resource in our grasp But time I'm ready to explode Population overload The biosphere on the verge of collapse Who has green face of black? Drilling, killing ocean life It's limitless expansion and it's time we pay the price Chevron unit carbide and some BP took their toll We built a can with shit till we can flush right down the bowl We spun down the control this week is awesome because my friend Paul in uh, Allentown, PA said, hey dude, uh, you should talk to these guys because I'm putting out their newest album. And Paul runs Soul Grinder uh, Records now uh, from Soul Grinder Zine and it's a couple of dudes from the Donner Party. Who do we have? Uh, I am Ross. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm the drummer, and he's the guitar player, singer. Awesome, dudes. Well, welcome to the Metal Forge. How how the fuck's everything going? Everything is going good, man. Thanks for having us. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like like I said, you know, uh Paul and see and I've I've heard of you guys before, but like Paul, he was just like he's like all about you guys and that's fucking awesome, right? Totally, yeah. Um Paul's a good dude. Um there's certainly uh very few people that are uh as knowledgeable and uh, passionate about this stuff as he is. Um, he's been a longtime supporter of this band, and so we're very happy to be collaborating with him. Well, definitely, because, I mean, you guys have been around for a while now, about four, 13, 14 years now, right? Yeah, we, we put our first EP out in 2010. Um, so, yeah, we're about 13 years. Wow. See, that you know, when it gets over a decade, it starts to get a little bit more, to me, it gets a little bit sweeter. Like every couple of years, it's like 13 years. Fuck yeah. Fucking yeah. 16 years. Fuck yeah. You know, when Ross is still surprised that I'm his friend at this point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Because, you know, I go through the fucking lineups like, like nobody's business, almost fucking. I'm not going to even compare myself to fucking green jelly, but <laughs> 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 because I don't have over 600 members. Uh, no, <laughs> but yeah. So 13 Perfect. years, that's a good fucking, uh, that's, that's awesome. That's a long fucking time for a band, especially today's bands. It's true. Um, yeah, my, uh, lease on life with bands was always about four years before we were all sick of each other um but with us the dynamic is just good and we don't really fight and we don't really argue and stuff and so it's been a pretty good run um we've only had one member switch out in all those years so that's what um, i was about to ask because i'm i'm on the metal archives and it only shows one past member. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. It's like either... And, and it's always a, a gamble because they either they have way too fucking much information and it couldn't possibly be true. Yeah. Or it is dead the fuck on. And you're... Now, it's it's, dead it, it's accurate. On. And there was even a period of time where we were just the three-piece. Yeah. Wow. When he... Yeah, when we uh, we lost our second guitarist, we we did about a year or so just as a three piece. Yeah, we were playing a lot of live shows just as a three piece. So, hell yeah! So see, that's fucking rad as shit already. So, I mean, are they are they similar in the years now? Like the 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 person who left was only there for say seven and a half years, and then this person was there for has been there six and a half because you took the year as a three piece. Yeah, I think that our current guitarist Matt has been there longer than our original guitarist who we're still friends with um, and he's still playing in another band Um, we just amicably parted ways and um, you know we moved on he moved on and it worked out well yeah and it's great because that is in your scene that's your you know that's awesome because in your own uh, you know private scene there that's like when you just do the thing with with all your friends that's so cool because that's you know we're the real quote metal brotherhood and and sisterhood whatever uh really the camaraderie really comes out yeah and and adding a new member put like a new lease on life for the band you know it's like a whole new chapter and he added a whole new dynamic to the band. New and writing style, yeah. He writes, too, so, um, you know, someone new to, to bounce ideas off of and stuff. And so and now we can't fucking stand him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, so, and, and, so the ser- and so the cycle goes, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. Our, our, our key to longevity is that we essentially, every week we have band practice, we just make fun of each other the entire time. Oh, I get that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I totally get that. And, you know, you have the one practice a week, and it's the escape from family life shit, too. I mean, yep. granted, you know, there's so many awesome ways to balance uh, band and, and, and home life shit now with the way, you know, post-pandemic has been. You know, the online presence is is really fucking cool to be a part of that. And, yep. uh yeah, so I totally get that because I do the same thing. <laughs> Ours is Wednesdays. 
So what's a what's a friend for if you can't just make fun of them all the time, right? Well, yeah, you know that's that's totally what it is. So the new album that uh, let's see, by the time this airs, it'll probably be out for about two weeks now. So <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that in because everybody already fucking knows. Uh, right. <laughs> the secret is out. Uh, the new album, Cutting Class. Um, tell tell us about it. Um, yeah, well, all, all the stuff that we did previously to cutting class was basically showing up self, for class, self produced and self made. And so, this was the first record that we've done that was with a producer in a proper studio. And, um, you know, we wanted to do a real proper full length record. Um, and bring a producer in to kind of bounce ideas off of and um, try different sounds out and stuff. So uh, the fruit of those labors is cutting class. So Awesome. Fruit it is. And you all worked with um, Mike Sabatini on that, was, was producing. Yep. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know, he's the um, longtime original drummer of Attacker. Yep. Uh, Played with the you know, Jersey Dogs and um, yeah, and uh, you know I I believe as a, fan, as a fan I had reached out to Mike because I always admired their recordings and I just said you know do you have any recommendations for us about where we could go um, any suggestions studio wise and um, he had just basically um, you know expanded his studio as it, far as equipment goes and stuff and was lo- looking for bands to produce and we had played together several times so he knew what was up with the band and uh basically invited us to come and and do it there we, we were just shortly on a radio show and uh mike sabatini was telling the story that ross went to the merch table and purchased every item that attacker had and uh he knew that uh he had to talk to this guy and ask what was up, and then they, you know, <laughs> bonded it with sense. That's awesome. I'm going to see if I can't get him on here because, yeah, uh, we've played a show together as well with my band and, and his uh, with Attacker. And yeah. long story, like, it's 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 crazy who knows who yeah. out there because he is now the, uh, the live drummer for Steve Bello, who one of my best yep. friends was – Steve Bellows bass player about 20 years ago and no, 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 so it, yeah it's like this whole fucking like spaghetti bowl of ridiculousness which yeah. I, I completely dig that yeah. you know that we have that as a scene yeah that it, you know that we all circle around each other so which is totally cool uh so 15 tracks yep that's that's a lot i mean I mean, from what I see that that's been released as of the time of recording this, you know, you got a, a three and a half and about a three minute. So the time is obviously there if they're all about that. Yeah, they're not all about that. <laughs> so yeah, for those that haven't heard us, um, we sort of dwell in the realm of crossover thrash um, bands like DRI, SOD, um, Nuclear Assault, stuff like that, and. Um, okay. So we definitely have our share of 42 second songs and minute and a half songs. <laughs> it's not, you know, obviously it's not all that. We have ones that push beyond four minutes and stuff. So it's sort of a, a grab bag of, of different lengths um, as far as the songs on this record go. So Absolutely. And, you know, I just love song titles as well. On, on the album, you know, obviously I would have to say my favorite at, at this moment is shit show. I mean, yeah. just because uh, I'm not amused, it just sounds great. It's like, what the fuck? I'm not, amused. <laughs> you know, just I like, mean, one of the best stories on the album is lethal lunch about a, a person dying from eating liquid cheese. I mean, can't really. Get <laughs> Uh, what is uh, SFTMA? <laughs> uh, shit from the mule's ass. <laughs> this is great. So, what are the plans with everything now that that the full length is out? And it's actually your first full length. 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> I mean, you know, by the metal archives <laughs> say, saying that that is, it, you've had some compilations and some splits and some EPs. Yeah, I mean, our first release, the spawning, was an EP. The Pizza Patrol record that we did prior to this was basically a six-song EP. We did a have a an album called Chain Reaction many years ago that was basically a full length, but again was self-produced and kind of self-released. So, as far as the uh, you know the major distribution world goes, I guess this is. Uh, our first big release, but um, this record was actually mostly made prior to the pandemic. Um, you know, great timing for us. We basically made a whole record, commissioned artwork, mixed, mastered, and we're basically ready to launch basically a week before the world shut down. And um, so we've just kind of been holding this um, because as an underground band, it doesn't really make any sense to put a record out when we can't go out and put it in people's hands and play and promote and do shows and, you know, things like this. Um, so we've just kind of been waiting for the time to be right. And um, that's now. On top so. of our busy lives. You know? Right. <laughs> so, okay, so the album was recorded. So you all didn't actually have um, have any actual product, though. Or did no, you? The, nope. the, the product is new. We only got the records themselves less than a month ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's what I, that would have been wild as shit to have been sitting on the vinyl sonnet, for, yeah, for three years or two years. Yeah. No, we were just sitting on the actual recording and all the artwork and everything was prepped and ready to go. But um, we decided to, you know, this is not how. As an underground band, this is, you know, not how we pay our mortgage and right. our bills. And stuff. So, you know, when you're Exodus, you got to persevere through whatever uh, the world brings. But for us, it just was like, you know, we should probably wait until we have uh, and t- time to go out and promote the record. Vinyl is expensive. So rather than, you know, spend the money and then sit on it doing nothing, I'd rather spend the money when we knew that we'd be able to play a show and promote it or <clears throat> go on a podcast or radio show. So right. and Absolutely. So with that, I mean, now that, um, now that, you know, it's about to come out by, again, by the time we record this, and what is the plan going forward? I mean, are you all actually going to do some like weekenders and, or do you all actually plan on doing like a month run or something? We haven't really planned that, that far ahead in all honesty, you know, when prior to the pandemic, you know, we had certain pockets of areas where we would frequently play because, we had a connection there and there was a scene there and what we've basically come to find as we're coming out of hibernation is that a lot of the bands we played with are defunct, not in business. Many of the clubs that we played at all over the tri-state area are closed, shuttered in some cases, demolished, not even there anymore. Um, So we're just kind of finding our footing really um, to see what's out there, who's out there, what we can what we can do so beyond this record release show that's coming up we don't really have yeah we're trying to we're trying to line up some more shows after that uh but essentially you know we'll have the record we're actually going to have it also on cassette um and then of course uh you know streaming digital um so you know we'll play our record release show we'll try to sell via the internet for some of the sales and then we're going to just try to book more shows to the end of the summer and you know keep pushing through definitely and and that's really where it is where it all is for all of us i think and that's that's awesome um so i do want to ask because you did mention the tri-state area and you're talking about um pennsylvania new jersey and new york right yep now so you guys are based in new jersey so Tell I, I'm in Louisville is the closest approximation to my scene is, is uh, Louisville and Southern Indiana, and so we don't really have things like radius claws shit uh, or or whatever. How is that up there for you all? Um, I mean, there's there's a gap here between 
Philadelphia, New York. Yeah, but also like very small shows like in basements and squats and VFWs and all of that. And there's almost, a, you know, no in between. It's either that or like, especially here in Jersey, there's that. And then there's like huge venues where, you know, you basically 2,500 people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So the in between is kind of, you know, it's tricky. There are bars, but you know, not all bars. Well, obviously, play metal bands, um, right? But yeah, it's it be, being sandwiched between New York and New Jersey. A lot of touring bands obviously stop at both of those places. But I mean, New York and uh, Philadelphia, uh, they stop at both of those places. But uh, New Jersey kind of sometimes gets you know left in the uh, left in the dust in the wind there. Well, yeah, and I, I think that is due to like tax situation shit. I, I believe that that's. Um, like you have if like a performer plays in New Jersey they have to like they have to pay like an excise tax or some shit to like the fucking uh, the local government or some dumb shit uh, yeah, I remember yeah. something about that because there used to be one on uh, sporting events too so, mm. and then there was one there was one uh, New Jersey governor that that cut that shit out and and repealed it so yeah, right. it's probably something like that. Fucking stupid fucking yeah, government for bullshit. Sure. <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, really like basement shows and, and shit like that in VFW halls. That is so fucking rad because like those shows here are they happen, but like not like often anymore. Yeah, you know it's usually a super special event kind of thing. Which is which is totally cool because like <laughs> it twenty years ago they happened all the time, yeah right you know but it's it, it's it's more of like a special thing these days I think I mean a lot of a lot of basement shows in New Jersey used to be around like the colleges like uh, New Brunswick was around Rutgers and then they used to have a bunch in Montclair around Montclair State um, and then there used to be you know ten years ago like every VFW hall used to be run by some kid that used to book shows obviously that's not necessarily the case i'm actually surprised by the amount of vfw shows that actually have come back though now are they still operating old bridge up there mm, i don't think there's much going on there anymore like old bridge metal Morse, you mean yeah so they still exist they're like a foundation now okay um, and they'll when like a bay area thrash band comes to we have a venue called starland ballroom uh which is one of those ones that holds like 2500 people um, when a band like that comes through, usually those old bridge guys will come yeah. out, uh, to do that stuff, but they run, they have like a barbecue every year that okay. has, uh, like bands that play, but they're basically just doing like foundation work at this point. They don't run like a scene or right. have like, uh, not like, like they used to, parents. not like they used to back in the day. Uh, no, no, but, no, no, no Johnny Z over there. No, no, definitely. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of sad that, you know, being so close up to that with that, it, 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 it doesn't do anything anymore, you know, but it's, it, that's, I guess that's how uh, the, like the metal legend thing comes up. <laughs> I just thought about, I just thought about something. We do have a connection to Metallica. We played with Raven. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The, oh, shit. It's, it's all like fucking like six degrees of separation. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I knew a guy who knew a guy whose cousin, sister's brother's uncle. <laughs> Hangs uh, out with uh, Robert Trejo. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he shook his hand one time. No, <laughs> no uh, but that's funny, though. But, you know, I mean... So you guys have a like a real fan connection when it comes down to it, like your fans are diehard fans, and turn you know, and when you hear you guys, you know, if you're really into thrash, I think you just fall in love anyways because you guys got it going on. I can tell you who our number one fan is. It's fucking Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, a lot of it has to do with. Um, you know, who were, you know, we, we open for a lot of national acts when they come through and, you know, a lot, it's very easy to convert people when you're, 
opening for DRI because we know we're going to knock it out of the park. You know what I mean? We know that everyone there is going to like what we're trying to sell. <laughs> because you know we know they're I mean? tasting music already. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming to a DRI show. Right. So, and, you and know, hey, I I've been there. I've opened with I've opened for them too. So I yeah. got you. I totally got you. <laughs> and yeah, it is when you know the uh, you know they know what you're you're selling already. Right. You know, even but, yeah, if they never heard you. In the in the last few years, you know, when we were playing shows, we started giving a try to like opening hardcore shows. So we played with the Crow Mags, and we played with. Leeway. Leeway and Murphy's Law and all the classic New York hardcore bands. And there's a little bit of a divide there. Um, I think it's mainly because I'm holding a guitar and singing, and that's sort of like frowned upon. You know what I mean? That's like <laughs> not a big punk rock, you know what I mean? So Or hardcore. Um, but um, we see, still seem to love them. Yeah, we still <laughs> seem to get a pretty good response at those shows, too. So We have a lot of, you know, breakdowns, and since we're crossover, our style definitely has a hardcore influence. Yeah, sure. so those, those people feel it, even though, you know, maybe they don't have long hair and denim vests on, they still they still can feel that. Yeah, a lot of times they'll, feel the energy. they'll just stand there and look at us funny, <laughs> and then when we're done playing, they'll come up and be like, oh, my God, you guys are awesome. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> It's like they don't want to show the emotion. Right, 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 right. You can't break the. Uh, you can't break the. Uh, yeah, you know. You know okay. Don't crack. Don't fucking crack. <laughs> right, right. Because once and, you fucking and, crack, and everybody. Let's it loose for the second band. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, but with straight up metal shows and you know thrash shows, it's it's always you know easy to convert people, um, whether they're fans or just seeing you for the first time. You know, it's for easy sure. to connect. Well, yeah, and and you know, I think. That's what I always like about Thrash is I think it's one of the ones that connects to like our primal essence as people and you know you just want to fucking just go fucking nuts man. Right, right. You know. So I, I, on top of that though we're also like a comedy show when you come and see us. Well yeah, because I mean, a lot of thrash is a comedy show when you go see it, really. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. There's some fucking zany shit that goes on. Um, <laughs> but before we switch over to uh, the derailed segment, one other question I have is, uh, obviously the name The Donner Party. If I were a betting person, I would say it's not just about the actual Donner party, but it's, uh, a wagons East reference. Uh, so, uh, it's funny cause this band started as a side project for me. Uh, and I'm a big history fan. So it is the, it, it is really based off the, the actual, <laughs> oh, uh, shit. history event because, uh, I thought it was, you know, for an American folklore story about cannibalism it's pretty pretty brutal i'm like oh great name for a band and then of course i found that there's like another band named that but it doesn't matter because we're better <laughs> <laughs> i think there's uh some there's like a 70s like hippie band that's also named like the donner party but you know we'll oh my it. gosh that's so funny though like i seriously hope that's like one of their last names is Donner because if they're named, if it's a hippie <laughs> band and they're named after it, that's fucking, that's rich. <laughs> and let, uh, let me tell you that we're uh, often confused with people call us the dinner party, but it's kind of funny because, you know, they ate people, so we yes, were a dinner party. Exactly. <laughs> well, and and that's what I, every time I kept doing the, uh, trying to like type into the, th uh, the you know, uh, the Metal Forge featuring the Donner Party. It's like D I no D I no Fat Fingers. Auto correct, yeah. Or people think we're like the Donner Kebab, which is delicious as well. So we won't, you know. Interesting. I have never heard of that. It's uh, Turkish food. Nice. Uh, I think we. I think we have a few. Like two Turkish restaurants here. In town. <laughs> I couldn't imagine that you'll have too many. We have uh, quite a few more over where we live. Uh, oh, absolutely, for sure. <laughs> so fuck yeah, uh, June 9th, the album album drops or dropped, depending on whenever this yeah, airs. When you're listening to this, yeah. De depending on when you're listening to this and when we're recording this, and <laughs> so hell yeah, dudes, that's that's fucking rad as shit. And you know, big shout outs to Paul for that, and we'll we'll shout him out later as well. Here. I don't want to talk about him anymore. 
<laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and switch gears here. This is derailed. Five random questions. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, first question. Is there something in life you would never give up for anyone? Uh, probably my VHS collection. <laughs> I was just going to say. <laughs> how, how many? Uh, I mean, if he could turn his camera, you would see the um, Blockbuster archive that we're in right now. Is but, it? A, um, is, do you actually have it set up like a Blockbuster? I mean, it's all, yeah, beautiful shelves, alphabet, alph oh. alphabetic, uh, <laughs> except I have no face outs. I have all, it's all spots, all spined out, so. Okay, so so it's I'm probably all, better. I'm probably better stocked than a blockbuster. <laughs> probably <laughs> sounds like it. Um, so okay, wow. Uh, now see, this brings up a whole other fandom thing for me. I don't have many VHS, and the ones I do have are you know like those near and dear to me, uh, like the original unedited Star Wars trilogy. Uh, yeah, uh, a couple versions of that actually. Uh, a couple different release versions. So, are they? You said alphabetically, but they're not genre alphabetical or just straight up A to Z. Well, it's pretty much all hard. So, <laughs> okay, I, I'm not. I'm not too uh, genre stocked here. So I don't. I don't have a comedy section and a. You don't uh, have an action section. Yeah, I don't have a musical <laughs> section. Pretty much just all old school horror. So. Okay, we'll see. That's awesome. Now. Do you digitize at all, or? Oh yeah, I mean, I bought all those movies again on DVD and then again on Blu-ray, and now I'm buying them all on UHD. So, whatever the best, whatever the best version is, I want to have, but my VHS are never going anywhere. So, right. Um, but what I'm saying is, like, the, or do you digitize the ones that don't have like DVD releases or Blu-ray releases? Yeah, I mean, I certainly have the capacity to do that, but, you know, there's a lot of talk about, like, oh, tape raw, and it's going to disappear. Come on now. I've had my tapes all since 1987. They all play great. <laughs> I've, not, I've not experienced that. I feel like that's just an excuse for people that don't have good tapes. So. Right. For sure. I don't know what that I'm talking about is what he's trying to say. Uh, what about you, Matt? Uh, what would I not give up? Yeah, what would you not give up for anybody? That's a good question. His I guess boat, probably. No, no, I'd give up my boat for somebody for a better boat. Sure, why not? Um, my uh, me being straight edge. Okay. Been uh, straight edge since uh, what? Sixteen years old. I feel like at this point there ain't no reason to turn back the other way. Well, I mean, you look like you're like a spry like twenty two. So it looks like it's only been about six I'm years. I'm thirty eight. I'm not. Thanks for saying that. I'm that young. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Don't sacrifice your beliefs for for anybody because that that's the ultimate. You know, that's the ultimate poser, right? Exactly. We even got a song about posers on this new album. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Question two. I, it just popped up, and I love it already. And because you guys would be the perfect ones to ask this question, did you ever buy a new gadget from an infomercial? I'm sure that I've bought in like the silly, uh, like a, an ad from like Instagram or Facebook. But what I bought, I can't fucking remember. Something stupid, I'm sure. <laughs> I bought. The, um, I bought back to VHS tapes. I bought the uh, Jerry Springer Too Hot for TV when it came out from the infomercial. Yes, I physically called the number and ordered it with my mom's credit card. That is fucking awesome. Oh my QVC. Was it too hot for TV though? Yeah, I mean, it just had like boobies in it and stuff. So it was like uncensored. Yeah, technically, right? yes, it was too hot. For TV. <laughs> right. RIP, man. RIP. Yeah, I mean, just just here recently, man. Like, you know, the, he was the uh, the mayor of like Cincinnati or some shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, sure. I I don't think I watched many Jerry Springer, but the Guar episode is definitely the best one. Classic Pete Steele episode too was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that one that one's good. Uh, well, oh, Gigi it? Allen was on it too, right? I, I think know. he was on like Donahue. Oh, Donahue. I thought, yeah, 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 I thought right. Peter Steele was on Donahue. I don't remember. Um, there was <laughs> one with uh, uh, fucking El Duce is from the on, mentor, yeah, yeah. El Duce's on one, I do remember that. So, yeah, I mean, the fucking uh, like the Ronco is the shit that I remember from like the 90s. I've been going through YouTube watching uh, old like 
70s, 80s, and 90s commercials. <laughs> so, fuck Time you. to get the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good shit. What is the most surprising thing you ever tasted? Ooh. Uh, I guess shit mole sauce no <laughs> i just ate some no uh most surprising thing i ever tasted huh that's a hard question do you have any idea that is uh, hard. i don't know yeah i mean we're we're pizza and burgers guys i don't know i'm not that that yeah well, i haven't had an escargot i couldn't tell you about that i mean i've eaten a lot of food in my life I yeah know. i don't really like i don't really like seafood i was at a wedding once and they brought a plate of like scallops wrapped in bacon and i like <laughs> threw one in my mouth and as soon as i tasted it i just spit it all out in front of the guy but yeah that's the worst when you try something that you're just like that just goes Wah! like yeah right to yeah no nah. if you could be a wrestler what would your uh, oh. name be or your tag team be Oh, this is this is right up rally. If you didn't know that we are both avid wrestling fans, uh, we even have a song on this album about a wrestler. Um, but what would be your name? That's a good one. I uh, I wore a um, a luchador mask for a set that we played. I think actually at Allentown once, and uh, <laughs> I I named myself uh, El Thrasho. Ah, yes, <laughs> the Thrasher. <laughs> we could be um, bonded by blood. Hell yeah. Ooh, and, and actually, you actually have to wear like the 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 whole like body singlet, so you're like the twins connected. Yeah, and yeah. I'll be Holt, and you'll be just pick a last name of somebody else in the band. <laughs> yeah, Holt and Hunting. Holt, Holt and Hunting. That's a good name. That is uh, Holt, <laughs> Holt and Hunting, bonded by bonded blood. by blood, and we'll we'll come out to you know something good by accident. Yeah, <laughs> uh, blacklist. Yeah. Um, metal command <laughs> oh yes that is awesome uh, so I have one more question but before we get to it as always links are going to be listed below so please give a like a share and a follow go follow these guys on all the social media sites because they are still listed below and um, fuck yeah do you all have any shout outs you want to give to anybody today I'm sure we have something yeah, I mean, um, shout out to Soul Grinder Records, shout out to uh, Alternative Gallery, um, shout out to um, some of our local Jersey Thrashers, Paralysis, uh, Mind Razor, Gavel, um, Morbid Cross. Morbid Cross, yeah. So, shout out to Mike Sabatini. Yeah, Attacker, Fuck shout yeah. out to Attacker. Shout out to the best band, um, best crossover band to ever come out of New Jersey, Mucky Pup. Uh, Shout yeah. out to Mucky Pup. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. That's that's an awesome fucking list. I dig it. So, final question of the day. If you had to live in another century other than this, which one would it be and why? That's a good question. I would just do the 80s over it. <laughs> 80s were the best, man. Best music, best movies. Yeah, but it's another century. Oh, century, shit. I thought we were talking about decades. <laughs> yeah. 100 years, not 10. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I'll go first. Mine's pretty easy. Considering I'll I'll just take uh, the time frame that this band uh, uh, comes from, you know, the 1800s. Uh, I've always been fascinated with the... Uh, like cowboy shit so i would go back and be a cowboy why not hell yeah man any anywhere in particular or everywhere that you would just uh, be like you'd be like the outlaw josie wales or whatever and fucking being yeah, like yeah, yeah, jesse james going either. in the south i uh i don't know i you know i feel like i would like to you know start new york and work my way to california is what i would do right on see for me there's some pretty vast different cowboy eras, though. Because yep, you've got like that, the 18- definitely is post Civil War, pre Civil War. Yeah, uh, that is like completely different. And then you get like all of those like 1870s, like post Civil War cowboys who like and Gold Rush era, yeah, yeah, who like ended up like living into like the the like the 1920s and shit. Yeah. Like fucking Wyatt Earp. 
fucking OK Corral. Yeah, absolutely. One place I missed when I went to Arizona, but it was so damn far away that I uh, couldn't fit it in my driving. Hell yeah, Ross. What do you have, man? No, I'll back. I'll back the cowboy shit. That <laughs> I'm surprised there's not a band called Cowboy Shit. Cowboy <laughs> shit. Well, there's a wrestler that says it, so it's not exactly. too far away. Sure. Yeah, it's cowboy shit. Fucking Adam Page. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. AEW's our shit. That's our that's our company. Yeah. We're not uh we are kind of defectors of the old WWE. Of I mean e. classic. Uh, classic uh, we love, but Yeah, classic is the best. Not so good. And you know, they really hit I mean, for me, they hit their stride, you know. I, I think the Hogan era is probably where <laughs> I mean Pre Hogan era, it was still much, pretty much like the old company. Yeah, ter- ter- and territory days. Yeah, yeah. You know, you had a fucking the champion for fucking three thousand. Bruno San Martino. Yeah, yeah. You had Bruno who was champion for what seven years or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Eight thousand days or something like that. Yeah, and then Bob <laughs> Ackland had it for like three years. Cross face chicken wing. Hell yeah. It, f- fuck yeah. <laughs> it, it's like. Imagine being in that meeting, like Vince. I want to come back. Yeah. Well, Bob, you're fifty. But I want to do this as a heel. You're I just, think it's he's great. He's like Let's the first it. insane wrestler, really. I guess. No. Uh, no. Fucking. Oh my. God. I mean, we love we love '90s WCW. You know, NWO era. Uh, oh all yeah. That Absolutely. And we were big big uh, WCW over WWF at that time as well. But, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. There was definitely. I. Uh, I definitely switch the channel more often than than not. We uh, we occasionally you know go to the indie scene as well here in New Jersey. We uh, there's a company called CZW that's out of um, I guess they're technically out of Philadelphia. I'm definitely familiar with them. Yeah, we used to go to their Cage of Death every year. Um, Ring of Honor was not too far away, and uh, there's uh, Wrestle Pro, which is out of like Rawway. There's a lot of cool uh, a lot of cool little indies guys. There was a wrestler. Habib from the car wash that just really, really resonated with me. It was just a, a little Indian guy that his gimmick was he worked in a car wash and he was like Orange Cassidy, basically. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> fucking Ross, Matt, thank you all so fucking much for coming into the Metal Forge this week. This has been fucking rad as shit. Off sure. of the new album, what do you all want to play out? Uh, let's play uh, Mondo America. I don't know if he has that record <laughs> or has oh. that song. You have it. Yeah, you do have. You heard him. This is Mondo America. America the Beautiful has become America the Violent. This is the country that produces an attempted murder every three minutes, a murder victim every twenty minutes, twenty-seven thousand murders a year, and the number is growing. Switch up slaving for the bosses, freezing feeds, burning crops, and trillion dollar deficits, and dealing is devouring shit. Please raise your boys upon the altar, gun violence never seems to fall to no taxes for the billionaires, millions almost no one cares. Beyond all comprehension Sicker than any splatter flick God sits his grace on me Mondo America Turmoil and desperation Atrocities that will make it sick From sea to shining sea Mondo America Let's go News media reporter fiction and play of opioid addiction Borders like a kid's cages, girls for tricks to earn their wages Police killing our folks, our climate crisis team the joke Cold war ship alien gods, kids eating detergent pods Beyond all comprehension, sicker than any splatter flick God sent his grace on me Let's 
In 2017, one man's vision and passion for all things metal started out as a record store in his house. Years later, the fight against a mainstream empire continues as Shade Beast. An independent metal collective and online store based in Athens, Georgia, is the world's premier heavy metal brand for music heads that value authenticity over the mainstream acceptance. Featuring original t-shirts from some of the best underground artists, as well as stickers, posters from the Shade Beast Presents concert series. Unique, one-of-a-kind collectibles and small curated selection of vinyl and cassettes from the masters old and new. Visit ShadeBeast.com and enter promo code SITHLORD. For free domestic shipping on your first order, whether you're a new customer or returning. And be sure to join the Shade Beast social groups on Facebook and the interwebs to keep up with the new release announcements and talk all things metal and Star Wars. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and filth. Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop The deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground, from the graves of all those unholy, and they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine, an independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats, they're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. 
visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com. What's up, Metal Forge fans? This is Alan Bishop, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest and head distiller at Spirits of French Lick. Do you find yourself drawn to the unexplained, fascinated by the Fortean, or enchanted by the paranormal? If the things that go bump in the night resonate in your mind, then tune into my brand new podcast, If You Have Ghosts, You Have Everything. Featuring first-hand accounts, collected stories, interviews, history, and speculation related to all things not of this world. Available now on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Set back, relax, and remember, if you have ghosts, you have everything. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio, something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 47150. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana is the premier 12,500 square foot music superstore that has served both Southern Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky metro area for over four decades. Originally founded by Marvin and Beverly Maxwell in the 70s, this gym remains a Maxwell family owned business. Mark Maxwell, along with his business partner Whitney McNichol, continued the reputation as being the national resource for all things music. In 2022, the iconic Guitar Emporium of Louisville relocated to Maxwell's Music, creating the largest independently owned showroom in the region. The retail offerings at Maxwell's Music includes a huge selection of guitars, basses, amplifiers, effects pedals, modeling amps, keyboards, drums, banjos, mandolins, ukuleles, sound systems, stage lighting equipment, and accessories. The music education program at Maxwell's is second to none. From private instrument and voice lessons to DJ, EDM, recording, songwriting, and music theory, to Rock School, Weekend Warriors, and Maxwell's Music Lab, there is something for every age and every ability level. Down in repair land, guitar and instrument repairs and refurbishment are taken care of by the Maxwell's team of expert guitar technicians and luthiers. They also do appraisals of instruments as well. 
Maxwell's offers installations for professional audio, visual, and lighting systems for schools, churches, clubs, VFWs, funeral homes, sports fields, and so much more. There's also rentable space at Maxwell's, from the music practice and rehearsal rooms for the individuals and bands, all the way to a meeting space and concert venue that seats up to 120. That also includes a professional audio, visual, and lighting system and a sound booth. Maxwell's has it all. All this plus original functioning 1947 recording booth to make your own record. Go to the Guitar Hero Throne, to the very own Elvis statue, and don't forget the Harmony Green Pocket Park. There's a reason the Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana has been recognized by the National Association of Music Merchants as a number one award-winning best store design, as well as top 100 music store year after year. You gotta see it to believe it. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana. (laughs) 